Today we're going to learn how to animate a lot of objects following a curve and how to loop them to have a seamless flow of objects following a curve. So let's see how to do it. First of all, let's delete everything because we're going to use a curve. So later we can edit this curve. We're going to use a Bezier. Let's go to Geometry Nodes. Let's close this and this panel. Let's create a new profile. And first of all, we need to add an object. So we're going to use a point. And later we can change this point with any object we want. Now we want to join these two geometries. So let's add join geometry. Now we can see the point is close to the Bezier, but we want this point to follow this curve. So to do this, we need to get the information of the curve and sample this information and say to this object, get the position of all the curve being sampled. So let's use sample curve. And now we need to say the position of this point have to be in the position of the curve being sampled. So now the point is at the beginning and if we move this, the factor that goes from 0 to 1, we can move this point sampling all the curve until the end that it's 1. Okay, perfect. Now, how we add more points? If you want to add more points, we need to increase this number. For example, let's add 5. However, now we don't see more points because all the points are in the same spot, here. So how we do to say, please, can you be one here, 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 and here? To do this, what we have to do is to use this. But how we do that? We need to use index. So if we connect index, we are seeing for each point that have an index, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, use a different factor. So it's like everyone have their own factor. But now we cannot do anything because we don't have any control. So we need to add a math node. Math node. And if we click here and drag this, we can see that at least we can move all the points from the beginning until the end. So basically what is happening is that until one doesn't reach the end, the other one doesn't start. So now I'm moving this. And when this one reaches the end, the other one, the second one, starts. But what I want is to have all of them with the same space in all the curve. So to do this, we need to do a little trick. We need to change this and select Divide. And now we need to increase this and you will see that we are seeing more points. So more you increase, more the points appear. And now we have all the five points together. So this is the solution. However, how we select which number is to add the same space between all the points and until the end? Because now this is bigger than this space. This is really easy to do. Just select the number of the points you have. So if I have five, just select five. And now we have the same space between the points and in the end. By the way, if you change the number of points, then you need to change this. To do it better, what you can do, I recommend you to use a value and note to control both numbers. For example, let's add an integer. And now let's connect it here. So if you increase the number of points, always we'll have the same space between them. I'm going to select 5. And now how we animate this and how we loop it. To animate this, we need to add another math node because we don't have any control. So every time you add something and you don't have a control, remember to add another math node. So now we can push this. As you can see, now we are pushing all together, but with the difference after this, that now they have the same distance. Okay, if you want this, perfect. But if you want, like me, to loop all of them, then we need to do something else. So I have another tutorial showing how to loop animations, and the trick is to add another math node and select fraction here. So with this, basically, now we can loop this animation and restart the game. So when this one will be here, it will appear here. Let's check it. 
And let's animate it with this. When this one reaches the end, so now it starts again. And the same with the others. So if we animate this, we have a similar flow of objects following a curve. If you want to animate this without keyframes, you can create keyframes. Or if not, you can add a scene time using seconds. And now, if you press spacebar, we have this loop animation. And remember, we are using a curve, so we can go to edit mode and we can change the pattern of this curve. We can extrude this point to continue the flow. Or what you can do, for example, is delete everything and draw your own curve. For example, let's do something like, I don't know, something like this. And now we have this animation. If you want more points, remember, let's add more points. And if you want to make them random, then what you have to do is not to use index. So let's delete this, and what you have to do is to add random value. Now, you will see that all of them are together here. So to distribute all of them along the curve, what you have to do here in max is to select the same number than this one. So if we increase this, you will see that we are pushing the points along the curve. And when we are really close to the last one, so this one, is almost the same number than this. So if you pass this number, they are going to pass between them, as you can see. So always use the same number. What you can do if you want is to connect this here. And with this, you will never have any problem. And if you want to change the random, you can click in the seed to give different patterns. If you want to increase the velocity because you increase the curve, what you have to do is to add another math node here just to increase the velocity. For example, multiplying. And now if we multiply this, we are increasing the velocity. Or what you can do is divide it. If you want to slow down, if you divide the velocity, then it will go really slow. I'm going to multiply it because it looks better. And this is how to make a flow of objects following a curve. And now what you can do is to change these points for any object. For example, let's create a Susan. And let's use this Susan in Geometry Notes. So let's go here and let's add object info and let's select this Susan. Now let's hide this Susan. And to change this point for an object, remember always to use instance on points. So let's use the Susan. And now if you want to align them along the curve, what you have to do is to use in rotation a line Euler to vector and use curve tangent. But we don't have to use the node curve tangent because here we have the tangent of the curve. So just connect it here. And I'll select Y or Z. I prefer Y because they are following the curve. And if you want to invert the direction, a simple trick you can do is here add invert rotation. And now they are facing the right direction. And remember, in any moment, you can edit this. Let's delete it. A, delete. And let's create another pattern. For example, something like that. And actually, I'm going to join this. So to join this, I'm going to set the start and the end and press F. So now I'm joining this curve in a seamless loop.
If I want more objects, then I'm going to increase this. If I want to change the seat, here. If I want faster, here. So this is how to create a similar flow of objects following a curve. I hope you learned something new, and if you like this video, give a like, subscribe, and you can download this project on my Patreon. So, see you next video.